Hey guys, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors. Thank you for joining us for another exciting podcast tonight. We're going back down to the state of Texas, the Cowboy Division. We're going to interview Mr. Taylor Reynolds. He's an absolute hammer on Toledo Ben. He's off to a great start this year in 2022 for the Cowboy Division. He got sixth at Sam Rayburn. And I looked up this kid on Facebook, and he's got a very, 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 very good record on Toledo Ben. So, the chances are looking very, very good for him to do well in the tournament coming up. Real quick before we get started, if uh, you're new to our podcast or you've been enjoying these podcasts that we've been interviewing all the anglers with, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. That way that you're notified when all of our future podcasts will be happening. And believe me, we have a lot more content coming in the near future, especially geared around the BFL schedule this year with Major League Fishing. So you're not going to want to miss this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and bring him in, Mr. Tater Reynolds from Texas. How you doing, bud? Oh, good. And yourself? Good, good, good. It's always a good day when you can interview a guy in a ranger hat wearing uh, duck waders. So that's, uh, that's yeah. a good thing, man. That's why I love doing this. So, well, you know, Tater, real quick, how old are you? I'm 22. Fist to be 23 in March. 22 years old, still a young guy. Been fishing a long, long time. I think I saw one of your pictures on Facebook, one of your first tournaments. You were like six or seven years old. Like, seriously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it all my life. Right, right. You're holding fish that are about as big as you. Um, you know how to catch them down there in the state of Texas. So off to a very exciting start this year with the BFL. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I win was real bad. It was bad on everybody. I uh, wish I could have done a little more, but I was limited, very limited to where I could go. Uh, scrounged out. I think I had 15 pounds, 13 ounces, uh, but it, it was good enough. You know, I got that sixth place finish. Right. Good for you, man. Top 10 finish. Good, great way to start the year. A lot of great momentum to uh, to finish out the year strong. But let's back up a little bit. So last year, uh, they canceled one of your tournaments. Uh, you weren't able to make that. And you ended up only fishing four tournaments, but you ended up 39th overall in points. You went to the regional Talk to us about that, man. Like, you know, just what was your strategy going in? Did you just stay consistent? Like, what'd you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I just consistent. I mean, I, I got on a pattern uh, out deep. I mean, that's how I like to fish out deep. Uh, pretty much caught my fish the, the same way, same technique, all the whole tournament. So, uh, looking back now, I wish, wish I had fished that extra tournament and, you know, would probably would have been way up there in points if, if I'd done good in it, which I feel like I would have. But, right. uh, you know, I'm going to try to fish all of them I can this year and see where I end up this year. Good for you, man. Well, we'll be rooting for you because you're off to a great start. But talk to us about Toledo Bend. I know that that's probably your more favorite lake. You're good on Sam Rayburn, but uh, there's something about you and Toledo Bend that clicks. So what are you looking forward to for the BFL tournament this year? How do you plan on practicing? Don't want you to give too much away, but uh, how do you feel like this tournament's going to turn out this year? Uh, I feel real good about it. I mean, I feel really good. Fish is, fish is holding just like I love them. You know, I love them out there in that 20 to 35 feet. Uh, that's what they're doing. I mean, I fished, I fished four days this week. The smallest bag I had was around 18 pounds. I went today, had about 24 pounds today. Um, just long as I keep that cold weather, long as the you know, water temperature don't rise and get too warm, I feel like it'd be really good. Gotcha, gotcha. So we'll break it down a little bit for us, man. Um, are you fishing reaction baits? Are you throwing the big 10 XDs like KVD stuck in his hand at Toledo Bend one time? Or how do you like to fish for him? I know you said you yeah. do like to go deep, but. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I love, I'm catching a lot of fish on A-Ring, uh, football jig. Uh, I ain't I ain't really throw the 10 XD much, but, I mean, I will next week, you know, and uh, hopefully they'll bite on that. I've, I've, we've caught some good stringers on that in the past, so that'd be nice. For sure. Nothing better than a jig bite. I remember um, 2012, Denny Brower won a Toyota Series tournament. Back then it was the uh, Costa Series, but he won a Toyota Series event there. 2012, throwing his signature uh, jig, black and blue, on Toledo Bend. And I just thought that was r really, really cool how even in the early earliness of the year, uh, you can still catch him on a jig on Toledo Bend. But then I did a little bit more research and found out that, it, that Toledo Bend's for sure a jig lake. So you got to yeah. tell me, man, what's your uh, – What's your go-to jig? What size? Uh, are you throwing a trailer that has a lot of action and undulates, or are you throwing a trailer that's you know kind of dead in the water? Like, what, what's your bread and butter there? Well, uh, you know, my dad he uh, he actually he actually designed the football jig. Uh, you know, my my roots run deep in it, and you know that's how I just I was I was raised throwing it throwing a football jig, and actually what I throw is a PJ's uh, PJ's three quarter ounce black and blue, and it seems like to me. 
just from experience, I guess from what I've what I've done, if the water temperature is below sixty five, uh, they they don't really want much action in the trailer, and uh, we just throw up a, a straight green pumpkin super chunk, zoom super chunk. You know, don't don't give out much action, just a little bit of wave action, and then once it gets above sixty five, we go. To, I, I go to a uh, zoom uh, a magnum ultra vibe speed crawl, and I, I throw a green pumpkin purple in it. Uh, but I mean, long as like I say, long as we don't get much warm weather, that that water temperature is going to be down there probably in the fifties. You know, for that tournament, so I'll be throwing that super chunk. I got you. So your dad was friends with the guy, the the Odom jig that started the Odom jig, which was the grass jig, and then the football head. Well, I, he knows Odom. I mean, I, we've we've used their jigs for sure too. Uh, but I'm not not cl that close. I don't guess. Uh, but no, he uh, he's always he's been sponsored by PJs, and then you know always been with them. Dude, that's some nostalgic jig history right there. Like, I'm a little jealous. That's really cool that you have family ties with that. I mean, it's a small, small world. That's that's pretty cool, man. So, um, well, then I got to ask another question. You know, and I, just talking about Texas fishing, you talked about throwing an A-rig. When I was growing up in Oklahoma and started throwing the A-rig in Arkansas, Missouri, and all that, we were throwing swim baits about yay big. Are you throwing small swim baits for big fish in Toledo? Or are you throwing probably seven inches? Or what do you, what, what's your go-to? Well, I'm uh I'm I'm actually throwing a uh, four inch uh, key tech uh, easy swimmer. That's that's what I'm okay. throwing and uh, and I you know I usually throw quarter ounce heads all the way around May rig, but you know being the BFLs you get you can only use three hooks. So right. uh, I'm actually I take three eighths, I put a little heavier heavier head on the bottom and leave the hook on them two. And then put quarters the rest of the way, and then cut the hooks off the top two quarter ounce heads. That way, them you know, fish seems like they're always going to hit that bottom. They're coming up from the bottom, and getting it, or they're going to get that center one. So, uh, you know, for the BFLs, that's just what I do. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, speaking in terms of the lake, you were out there today. Uh, what's the water temperature look like? What's the clarity of it? Is it a normal pool right now? Is it a little bit low? Like, what are you seeing? It's uh, it's a little bit low. Uh, it's been low for a while now. It's uh, you know, I think full pools one seventy two and a half, and I want to say it's like one sixty eight and a half. It uh, it was even lower than that, but we've been getting some rain here lately, so it's coming up a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay, well, cool. So, um, you know, thinking about the tournament coming up in the next few few weeks, uh, what do you think weight wise it's going to take to win the tournament and then get a check? Well, uh. It seems like, you know, I always go back to history. It seems like the lake always produces about the same. Uh, my dad actually, uh, you know, did, didn't get to fish last year because they canceled it. But the year before, in 2020, uh, my dad actually won here, uh, won the BFL. And he had 24 pounds, two ounces, but I think second was like 19 pounds. Uh, and I want to say the year before that, Cody Pitt won it with the mid to mid mid twenties. So I'm I'm gonna think about the same. I think about mid twenties, you'll have a good shot at winning. Somewhere between twenty two to twenty five pounds. And if you know if if you get on that really good deep bite, somebody you know you you may have even a little bit better bag, but probably around mid twenties. Right, right. I got you. I got you. So that's cool. What about a co-angler? So if you were a co-angler in this event, what kind of baits would you think about? What are you thinking about, you know, behind that guy in the front of the boat that's probably throwing reaction baits? And what do you think weight-wise for a co-angler? Oh, uh, you know, like like that uh, the BFL on, on Rayburn, you know, it actually – the co-angler had more weight than, than the boater did. You know, I think 19 right. pounds on the boater side and then, you know, 21 guy one, – 21 pounds on the co-angler side. So – you never know about the back of the boat. I mean, it's 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 fishing deep. It's anybody's ball game. If you could drag that bait right, you know you go you're gonna get bit. So, uh, far as baits wise, you know, me I'm gonna be throwing a rig, crankbait, football jig. Uh, you know, far as the back of the boat, you know, he may Carolina rig, fluke, something like that. Maybe something finesse, shake your head, Ned rig, drop shot, something like that. Maybe that'll you know, produce him some bites that I wouldn't get. Sweet. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. A lot of great insight there. Uh, final question about Toledo, Ben. What's the grass looking like this year? I know that they said last year there was bad. You know, the grass kind of died off. What's it looking like this year? Yeah, it 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 ain't look no better this year. Uh, you know, it, really? they they're actually the 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 wildlife and fisheries. They're actually they're planting grass. They got grass planted a few spots across the lake. They're they're trying. You know, uh, 
you know, they're trying to figure out what's killing it. Uh, some people say it's the grass carp eating it up as it grows, you know, but they've got it grass planted in cages where you know, there's no other elements, uh, you know, can controlling it. But uh, they're trying. Hopefully it'll come back. You know, it's been a while since we have grass over here and we sure need it. That's for sure. It's kind of nice to hear about an organization that works within the state, that's state funded that wants to plant grass and help a uh, lake grow and neutralize the population of, you know, the fish in there. Not just, you know, we, we don't really hear about that in Florida. So it is kind of interesting to talk to someone from a different state and, and just how their thoughts are and protecting the lakes and, and all that. So that's really, really cool. So, well, Tater, you gave us a lot of great insight, man. Uh, we're going to be rooting for you this year. I know you're going to have a solid tournament. We, we, we want to give you this final little part here. Is there any sponsors you'd like to thank, any friends or family or anybody at all that helps you out? We just want to give you that opportunity now. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, my family, friends, you know, everybody's always rooting me on. I appreciate them. Uh, I actually actually just signed a deal on with Gorman, uh, you know, so – I'm going to be sponsored by them this year and upcoming years. Hopefully that, that goes out well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, just, I thank everybody for supporting me. Yeah, good for you, man. Good for you. So, well, Tater, good luck this year. Thank you for coming on with Revital Outdoors. And, hey, man, we hope to have you back on because we're going to be doing some pre-tournament podcasts like what we're doing now, but then some post-tournament podcasts you know, with the guys that are doing well. So hopefully we get to talk to you again because that means things were good for you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on. All right, Taylor. Have a good night, bud, and we appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. Again, that was Mr. Tater Reynolds. He had a solid uh, finish last year in the points for the BFL Cowboy Division. He's off to a really, really good start this year, being in sixth place. So we're going to be rooting him on, and it's really cool to hear from him, uh, being a, a local hammer from the Toledo Bend area and how he thinks the uh, BFL is going to uh, win, be won on this year and the Bates that it's going to be successful. So – Again, thank you for all of our support, everybody that's been following us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's been absolutely phenomenal. We couldn't be more thankful for you. But if you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, you're interested in the Revital Outdoors products, check out our website, revitaloutdoors.com. We have all of the information in there about our products. Again, we're a premium CBD company that makes products just for the outdoor enth enth enthusiasts. All of our products are THC-free, made right here in America, and they're great for those aches and sorenesses that all of us are getting out in the field, help you sleep better at night, help you reduce your anxiety, um, joint discomfort. That's what CBD really helps all of those avid outdoor uh, enthusiasts with. So we hope you take the opportunity to check out our website. Also, if you're interested in our pro staff program, check out our website, hit the pro staff tab, fill out the form. We'll be happy to review it. We accept all applications, whether you're an avid hunter or an avid fisherman, but all we want is someone that really thinks that they can represent Revital Outdoors well and be a part of our family. So Again, from all of us at Vital Outdoors, thank you for tuning in to another one of our podcasts. I'm Theron Asbury. God bless. Be safe out there, and we will.